Hi guys and welcome back to Top Speed Golf. In today's video we have a student, a member of the website who's currently swinging his driver about 104 to 106 miles an hour, would like to get a little bit more swing speed, uh, is releasing a little bit early so he's not getting into that perfect straight line release position and also standing up a little bit out of the shot. So we're going to talk about those three things. Uh, I know a lot of guys out there are struggling with the same issues. If you're struggling with those, I'm going to give you some great tips, some great keys to really getting rid of those issues and starting to hit some longer, straighter shots. Let's go and get started. All right, so first let's talk about a couple of things that he does really well. Now, I like a lot the lag that he has in his swing. So we can see as he's going back, big wide takeaway. That's really a key to getting some good lag, making sure that the hands don't set too early. So we can see as this, as this club is parallel with the ground, he's almost waist high, which is a very wide takeaway. And then the wrists stay nice and soft as he's starting his downswing. So we can see how he's actually increasing the angle in the hands and wrists as he's starting down. So if we look at those several frames, this is a great uh, representation of that. So watch the angle between the wrist and the forearm. And then watch what happens to this club head, head how he allows gravity for that to drop as he makes his transition. So if you see in the next frame, allowing the, the club head to continue to drop and drop some more, until he starts his downswing. So the club head is actually starting to, uh, is still dropping down as his hands begin the downswing. So if you look at his hands here, let me go ahead and erase those lines. Watch his hands, how they're beginning to work down as the club head is still working back. That's a great position of lag there. Tons of lag built up. Now we need to get rid of that lag. We need to release that lag. And he's doing a pretty good job of this. Um, has a little bit of forward shaft lean left at contact, but as he gets out in front, we'll notice that he's not quite hitting the straight line release position. So his chest, if we draw a line from the center of the chest about 45 degrees in front, we'll see that the, the hands are roughly in that position, but look how the club head's already past that. We'd like to see, or the club shaft, we'd like to see that club shaft right on that line, and, and being in that straight line release is going to get him a lot more consistent. So what's happening here is he's kind of standing up, which I'll show you in just one second, and stalling out the hips. So the hips are kind of stalling out at this position, and they're not allowing the club to release properly. He's also standing up a little bit while he's doing that. So let's take a look at this view. And as I play through this, you'll see, let's go ahead and mark a couple things here so we can see this better. There is the, the back of the hips at address. So now we're gonna see backswing, great amount of lag, everything looking pretty good here. And then he starts to stand up and tighten up the body. And you can see how the hips have moved off that back line, how the hips are not rotated open enough. And then he's kind of stiffening up the body to allow the hands to release. Now, you do want the hands to release past the body, but we have to have a good balance of this. If we release the hands too much and we, we completely slow down the body, we're gonna lose some speed. If we try to drag the hands and arms through with just using body rotation, we're going to lose some speed and some accuracy. So it's about finding that nice blend. So we want to stay in our posture. We want to uh, create a lot of these really good mechanics so that we can deliver the speed time and time again and be consistent. So let's go ahead and, and drag over to the right side of the screen. We've got a, a video. Thanks, Terry Rouse, for allowing me to, to use this footage. This is some video of Tiger from probably back in 2000, if I had to guess, I would say it's 2007-ish or so when he was playing really, really well. Um, let's go ahead and draw a line on his hips, and let's take a look at the same thing happening. Let's talk about some good things that you want to do to be able to stay in posture and still be able to release that club out in front. So number one, let's go ahead and talk about, let's go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. As he goes to the top, you can see that he's staying in his posture really, really nice. As he starts down, this is going to be the first key to this. As he starts down, he needs something to rotate with. He needs something to rotate from. You're going to see his chest stay closed, and you're going to see his lower body, his chest, and his shoulders are all going to first work down to the ball. That's going to be the first move as he starts the downswing. Everything's going to get closer to the ball. He's flattening out this, this club shaft. And now he's basically just building this up and, and saving up a lot of energy that he can use later in the golf swing. So now once he's halfway down, here's the real key to being able to stay in the posture. Now we want to take the left side of the body. There we talked about the right side of the body. Let's talk about the left side of the body here. And imagine that this line was a string that was tied to your left hip pocket. And this was a string that was tied to the 
the, the left side of the torso, and this one was tied to your left shoulder, and there was a machine or a device that was pulling all three of these strings up and back as you're doing that. So if, if the left side goes up and back, we're gonna naturally stay in our posture. If the, the hips start to work this way or to the right, that's when we're gonna be coming out of the posture. So you'll see now, if you imagine those strings pulling, watch how he stays in his posture and that left side pulls up and back. So let's go ahead and watch that a few times. There we go, and since it's not only pulling around in a circular fashion, but it's also pulling behind him, that allows him to stay down in his posture, and we can see there, completely in the posture, one of the reasons he's, you know, great golf swing, playing really, really well at that time, and uh, hitting the heck out of the ball. So that's what we're looking for, those three moves. We wanna have the load, which is that first piece move down. We wanna have the left side pull up and back, and as a result, that's gonna allow us to whip the club through. So if we kinda of pause, let me go one more piece here. So as we, we're paused right here, this club is going kind of the opposite direction. It's going down and away. As we pull the left side of the body up and back, that's gonna allow the club to whip through. I'll show you the same thing. Let's, let's jump back over here to the left screen again. And let's go to the face on video. And I'll show you from this, this same direction. So as that club is in the downswing, this would be the position I was mentioning where the club is pointing down and to the right. And as we rotate this left side of the body this direction, excuse me, it would be a little bit more back. We rotate the left side of the body this direction, just like we drew on Tiger there, that's gonna allow the butt end of the club to turn back up and release so we can see he's not really rotating enough and the club is releasing past that so now let's talk about what he's going to feel what he's going to work on as he's doing this to be able to get some more speed and what I would focus in on in the drills okay so number one as he starts down the first move down I want him to feel like the right hip right of the center of the chest and the shoulders are all working down to the ball, just like we talked about with Tiger doing there. We'll notice that his first move is a little bit more of the right side going out. So the right side, instead of feeling like it's moving down, it's starting to move out a little bit and see how the right hip starts to bump forward and the body almost starts to work up first. We wanna have the body working down first and then that way we have some energy stored up to where from here we can feel like this hip goes up and back shoulder goes up and back and our torso goes up and back and shoulder goes up and back what we'll see with his swing is a little bit more of a right side moving to the right through contact so the the, the hips and the shoulders are moving continuing to move down to this ball and that's keeping everything going toward the shot and then his body stiffens up so what i would like for him to do is to do about 100 repetitions and the first move down is going to be to get closer to the ball so as soon as he goes to the top of the backswing, 100 repetitions here, he needs to feel like his hip is still facing down to the target. He's moving closer to the ball with his chest, and he's gonna pause in that position. And then the second thing we're gonna do is from that position, he's gonna go ahead and swing on through, and he's gonna feel like his hip is moving up and back, his shoulders moving up and back, and I want him to come all the way around to a good full finish as he's doing this. So I don't want you to pause in that halfway down position and then pause at impact. I want him to come all the way through to a good full finish, rotating the hips out of the way. And if he does that, that's really gonna help him to release that club farther out in front also. So let's go ahead and look at it from this angle. If, as he starts his downswing, if here, instead of stalling the hips out, he can have those hips to continue to rotate back and up. You can see how they stalled out there. The hips rotate back and up. He's gonna be able to rotate the hands, the hips, and the shoulders are all going to rotate on through together and he's going to see himself in a better straight line release position out here in front. So 100 repetitions pausing halfway down, 100 repetitions feeling like you come, you pull the left side up and out um, as he's coming through there and feeling like he gets in that straight line release like the club isn't releasing quite as quickly. So for those of you who may be doing the opposite of this and rotating the hips really really fast and spinning out of the shot, 
this wouldn't be the drill for you. But for those of you who tend to come up out of your posture to tend to slow down the body a little bit too much and then flip a little bit early, this is going to be a fantastic drill for you. So go through those 200 repetitions, work hard, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, so now that he's really primed up, ready to, to start releasing this club properly and working through those drills, those of you who are struggling with lag and you'd like to see some angles a little bit more like he's getting here, really getting those sharp angles, I'm going to play a preview of a lag video here in just one second, and you can click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device, and you'll be able to get instant access to that video. And I'm going to talk about how the takeaway is really crucial to this. So we're talking huge amounts of lag. Once he gets to release this, he's going to have some really good club head speed. But it all starts back here in the takeaway. So I'm going to go over the number one lag mistake that I see. So work hard, guys. Go ahead and check out that video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our latest videos. And it really helps us to click that like button uh, to help rank the videos and so I can keep giving you guys some, some uh, new videos and good information. Good luck, and I'll see you guys soon. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.